January of 2022, uh, a week before launch day, we get this trailer dropped off. Um, in that trailer is essentially uh, the portable church. Everything we need for a portable church is in that church, in that trailer. And it's really called, um, some people call it a church in a box. And it's essentially for churches like ourselves that are mobile that we have to set up and tear down every weekend. So January 23, 2022, um, we have this trailer dropped off and none of us, none of us have ever driven a trailer. None of us have ever known what it means to hitch a trailer to a truck. And we really had to learn on the go. with this gate not opening this and gate this one Sunday this gate didn't open at all so I had to scale this fence I had to jump over the fence and then mess around the box and figure it out and, and buzz it open because it took me about 30 minutes to 45 minutes at least to do that So what was the question again? What are we doing here this morning? We're picking up the trailer, which is where we have all of our equipment. Like all of our equipment. So Dad, you said that it takes about 30 minutes for one person to pick up everything. Do you think that time we cut by half if you have two people in the morning? Um possibly, yeah. You could definitely be more efficient. There's a there's a part of it that um, requires that that can use the help of two people. So, for example, when we back up the truck to the trailer. Yeah. This is very very. This is very very close, and this is the kind of stuff that sometimes delays you because you need to be able to get the truck out without damaging this person's vehicle. They could have parked anywhere else. <laughs> But it chose to park right here. big battery we need to jump it so that the trailer actually has its own different power source so that's what we do here we kind of turn it on by shifting this from here to there and so that helps us jump that battery all right so we want to make sure that the warning sign is up here so we try to just slip it in and then just put it. These are stabilizers. They make sure that the trailer stays fixed on the back of the vehicle so that it's not wobbling uh, back and forth. Jordan, when we first started, yeah. um, it took us an hour to get yes. this done. It took us an hour. These steps. That These steps, we, we have no idea what we're doing because this is not what we do for a living, right? But after doing it every Sunday, now we can do it in 15 minutes. You know, kind of like, I don't know, this took us like, what, 10 minutes, really, because we had two people.
For the last two and a half years, every Sunday morning, we've had to pick up a trailer from the storage space, hitch it to a truck, and drive it to this facility. As you can imagine, every so now that we have some issues. So whether it's a flat tire, whether it's a gate not working, or even the hitch not working. Every Sunday morning, it, you know, there's always a challenge. It really became a prayer point that God would help us to push through all the mechanical and logistical challenges. There happened some Sunday we thought, man, it's not going to be a service today. But God in his faithfulness, you know, it helped us. The security people are in here yet. So technically, the theater doors are closed. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Sunday morning, we're able to navigate and push through all these logistical and mechanical challenges so that we can gather together as a body of believers and come to worship. We thank God for His faithfulness, you know, over the last two and a half, almost three years now, I've been able to you know, do this. Yeah. That's where all the bulk of the equipment for the big church is at. This right there is for the kids. Do that one a little bit later. So what we do now is once all the boxes are out of the truck, we close it up, we take it out of the way and we go park it somewhere and then wait till after service to pull it back up again. Let me see if Tolu has a table. Um, unless they're looking for it. Did you see Natasha go out there to look for it? Maybe she went to go. She started setting up the internet. So. Okay. Yeah, let me let me go see. Now I'll be back in. Bet. Yeah. I'll start setting up drums. My name is Jarrell Campbell, and I am part of the music ministry at King City. I got involved by playing at the church. What motivates me to volunteer at King City each week is my heart for God. I see what the vision is here at King City. I really support what they're doing. I don't mind to get up and serve because the people in the camaraderie and knowing that the purpose is a good purpose and it's building the kingdom. Yeah, I guess they put it in box four because the kids have tables too, I guess, maybe. Uh, okay. My name is Byron Pickett. Um, I serve as the music director in the worship ministry and also the co-lead of the production team on the audio side. Okay, you want some other snacks? No? <laughs> From the first time I experienced KC, um, even before we launched, and the vision nights, um, I was serving. And then, 
What motivates me to volunteer every week? I think the simple fact that what I do has influence. God has blessed me with gifts and talents that have a certain type of influence on people. And to do that in a place where I know that he's getting the glory from it, it could get tiring and frustrating sometimes, but it's worth it. My name is Solomon Nichols. I'm the leader of the setup team here at King City. So what line do we typically go to? I first got involved with the volunteer team um, through Pastor Dial. He actually reached out to me and really encouraged me to join alongside him in terms of volunteering. I think we're good on the uh, foam flooring, so I'll bring the uh, other box in. For the, the play, play panels, panels right? Yeah. All right, cool. yeah. I'd say primary motive is to ensure that the church that I'm a part of can do what they do best every Sunday. Knowing that God is looking on the work that we're doing here and He's pleased as a result of it and that there's many more people to reach within Houston, that's a main motive for me. The confidence monitor is broken. If you don't know what the confidence monitor is, it's what the worship team uses for lyrics or anybody that's up there. We use that to send messages to whoever is speaking. And it's broken, so Dial 2.0 just went back to the storage facility to pick up an extra TV that we have and hopefully it works. See, we're gonna, we're gonna see if Dial makes it back in time because if he doesn't, I'm just gonna be sad. I'm my chip, and you're gonna fly solo. Keep your head down. Let's see. How are you today? I'm good. I'm not gonna toss this. No. You're closer than before. <laughs> Get the right. capitalization. No, 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 just, you know how to do that. Oh, okay. Capitalization. It's very important for people to get involved. The Bible says that we are a body. Yeah. Can leave that off for a second? Christ is the head and different churches, different people in churches, we're different parts of the body. My hand can't live by itself. So my other hand has to get involved. My feet have to get involved to make this whole thing work. And I think God is the same way. Obviously, God can do whatever He wants, but He chooses to partner with us. And there's so much that He wants to do in this earth that He's waiting for His church to step up and partner with Him. So it's very important to get involved.
would I say to someone who is considering volunteering but haven't taken a step? Um, I would say you're missing out. You know, um, volunteering isn't just about giving your gifts. A lot of times I think people don't realize that as you serve, you get refreshed. There have been times where I've come in feeling low or even needing something naturally, you know, and because I serve and I'm connected to other people, I find that blessing through community. The most rewarding part of volunteering for me is I get to support a ministry and a purpose that is really pushing for God's kingdom to be shown on earth. Once I really got serious about pushing the kingdom, it was easy for me to do that. It's easy to get up and set up and different things like that because I know whatever I'm getting up to do is literally for God. I'd say the most rewarding part is to see the fear that I had when I first started in the sense that spending time, time that as I was in school, working a full-time job, have a personal life, things of that nature, thinking that volunteering would take away energy or time from that. But actually knowing that God has rewarded me and grown me as a person, that's been the most rewarding part. Volunteering to me is service. Like, you gotta get out yourself, get outside yourself. And some of the best times I've had in my life were when I was serving. Volunteering to me is self-sacrifice. Jesus Christ, the one that we follow, ultimately was a true example of self-sacrifice. And spending your time to embark and joining together to set up or to worship is ultimately you saying, instead of sleeping in on a Sunday morning, I'm gonna come out and do what God has called me to do. Volunteering is leadership. I think a lot of people look at volunteering as like, like a lesser role, um, but just because you aren't necessarily a lead or have the title of a lead, doesn't mean that you aren't leading while you're volunteering. The best leaders are servants. The best leaders lower themselves to help others rise. And volunteering is a way to do that. What I would say to somebody who is considering volunteering but hasn't taken a step yet is, in the words of Shia LaBeouf, just do it. Just do it. There's no better time than now. Just hop into it. It's like a pool. Just jump in. You feel me? 